So you're doing the keto diet, but you're wondering, can you have fruit? In this video, I'm going to share with you nine keto fruits you can have and still stay in ketosis, lose weight, and feel damn good. My name is Ben Azadi. I'm the best-selling author of Keto Flex. And I'm excited to get into these nine fruits. I'm also going to share with you not just the research behind why I chose these fruits, but the maximum you could have per day and still remain in ketosis. And at the end, I got a bonus tip for you. And if you do this little tip, it actually allows more flexibility, meaning more fruit and still staying in ketosis. So let's get right into these nine fruits. The first one, berries. Berries are high in antioxidants. They are loaded with fiber. They also could help lower blood sugar. They're high in vitamin C, great for the immune system, and also can reduce inflammation. Blueberries are also beneficial for the nervous system, the brain, and cardiovascular system, eyes, and urinary tract. Blueberries eaten frozen, in particular, have even more benefits. So if you're not eating organic, wild, frozen blueberries, here is some research that's going to convince you to do so. Since blueberries are frozen, this study showed, after they are picked, they are equal in quality to freshness. The researcher Plum analyzed the anthocyanin content of blueberries, which is that pigment that makes it nice and blue, loaded with antioxidants, by the way. And she wanted to look at frozen for one, three, five months and found no decrease in antioxidants even after months later, meaning it could stay in your freezer for months and still maintain the quality that we want. The leaching occurs from freezing actually increased the anthocyanin concentration, noted Plum. The ice crystals that form during freezing disrupt the structure of the plant tissue, making the anthocyanins more available. Antioxidants such as anthocyanins eliminate free radicals, which are produced through common biological reactions within the body and outside factors such as the sun, pesticides, other pollutants. So think of that as inflammation. And research is clear that if these free radicals are left to roam free, they could attack your DNA, proteins, and lipids, resulting in cellular changes that lead to the development of diseases such as cancer. So what is the recommended intake of blueberries to stay in ketosis? No more than one and a half cups. That is equivalent to 25.6 grams of carbohydrates. Another berry is strawberries. Research demonstrates that there is anti-clotting, anti-thrombotic effects of strawberries. Of the tested strawberry varieties, they showed significant anti-thrombotic effects. The dual mechanism of the effect may involve a direct inhibition of both platelet function and antioxidant activities. Another study showed that strawberries decrease atherosclerotic markers in subjects with metabolic syndrome. Short-term freeze-dried strawberry supplementation improved selected Anthrosclerotic risk factors, including dyslipidemia and circulating adhesion molecules in subjects with metabolic syndrome. Another study showed that it helps lower bad oxidized cholesterol, which let's face it, a lot of people in the keto space are concerned about that. And this showed that we conclude strawberry supplementation reduced oxidative damage to LDL while maintaining reductions in blood lipids and enhancing diet palatability. Added fruit may improve the overall utility of diets designed to lower coronary heart disease. And we know heart disease is through the roof. So what's the recommended intake? No more than 1.5 cups of strawberries. That's about 17.5 grams of carbohydrates. The second fruit is avocados. Yes, technically avocado is a fruit. It is wonderful as a keto cooking oil, aka avocado oil, I don't know if you knew this, but avocados contain two times more potassium than a banana. One cup of avocados has about 800 milligrams of potassium. That's important because as you lower your insulin levels with a low-carbohydrate keto diet, you also get this electrolyte dumping effect. It's like this diuretic effect where the kidneys dump excess water and excess electrolytes. One of the leading causes to keto flu or to why people might get heart palpitations or just not feel that great on keto is this excessive loss in electrolytes. And one of the most important electrolytes is potassium. So avocados could help you replenish those electrolytes. We also know that high amounts of vitamin B5, which is found in avocados, support stress levels and your adrenal glands. They are also loaded with phytosterols, which has been proven to reduce and help inflammation. 
It's high in oleic acid, which helps with fat burning via the PPAR alpha process. Avocados are also a physiological relaxer that helps you sleep and blood pressure. Avocados are loaded with folate, vitamin C, vitamin K, B vitamins, vitamin E, manganese, magnesium, zinc, and vitamin A. And it's loaded with fat-soluble vitamins, which also enhance the absorption of other nutrients. The recommended intake for you to stay in ketosis and feel damn good is one whole avocado per day, which is about 23 grams of carbohydrates. The next fruit is coconuts. Yeah, coconuts for the win. It contains a good amount of medium chain triglycerides, MCTs, which are rapidly absorbed by the body, bypasses the liver, bypasses any bile production needed, and goes right into your mitochondria for a great source of energy. Specifically, the MCT oil C8, which is called caprylic acid, can enhance ketone production. These are three studies that show out of all the medium chains, C8 has the best response when it comes to producing ketones. So if you're struggling to produce ketones, this might really help you get into that great land of ketosis. For recommendation's sake, for MCT oil, start slow because if you go too fast with MCT oil, you might get disaster pants, just a heads up. So start with one teaspoon per day and work your way up to one tablespoon. I don't recommend cooking with MCT oil. I re recommend adding it to your coffee or your tea. Now, if you're going to use coconut oil, that is a fantastic cooking oil. Get organic, unrefined. Number four is going to be grapefruit. Now, just the caveat here, if you're on certain medications, you got to be careful with grapefruit and some of the other fruits here. So take caution, talk to your doctor. But grapefruit is high in vitamin C. It has citric acid, which could help decrease the risk of kidney stones, which is a concern for people who do keto. It also has lycopene, which can be good for problems with the prostate. Men, I hope you're listening. So as I mentioned, if you're taking a blood thinner or some other medication, speak with your doctor. It is higher in sugar, so we want to have small amounts. I'll give you the recommended dosage in a second. But it contains a good amount of naringin. This has been shown to help with insulin sensitivity and helps the liver burn fat instead of storing it. There was this article, this study that came out, which showed, now it was done on mice, but this mice study suggests that grapefruit juice might be as effective as the type 2 diabetes drug metformin at lowering blood glucose. The recommended intake for grapefruit is no more than one medium grapefruit per day to stay in ketosis, which is about 27 grams. And by the way, I'm going to have all the studies and all the resources that I mentioned in this video down in the show notes. Next, we have olives. Olives may help with blood clotting. It's loaded with vitamin E and pre-vitamin A. It has copper, iron, and it also can be helpful for those with high blood pressure. Olive oil is actually my favorite, one of my favorites uh, of, for cooking oils. And I'm going to share with you a little bit of some research on why smoke point doesn't matter and why you can, in fact, cook with real olive oil. But olive oil is a potent anti-inflammatory oil. It's anti-cancer, loaded with vitamin E, helps support a healthy heart, the arteries, and blood sugars. Extra virgin olive oil contains at least 36 antioxidants and polyphenols. It's also great for inflammation. There is a compound in olive oil called oleocanthal, which inhibits the pro-inflammatory COX enzymes that contribute to a wide manner of inflammatory diseases. And it's great for the brain, by the way. This study showed that there's a lower risk for diabetes and obesity with those who consume olives because they're high in monounsaturated fats. They greatly reduce the risk for type 2 diabetes and obesity when substituted for foods containing other more harmful fats. The antioxidants in olives also inhibit the damage from diabetes-related oxidative stress, which makes olives an effective treatment for hyperglycemia and diabetic complications. This study on PubMed showed there's a lower risk for diabetes and obesity as well. And these studies show the same thing. A review published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition studied the effects of olive oil consumption on type 2 diabetes incidence. Researchers followed 59,930 women from the ages of 37 through 65 years old from the Nurses Health Study, NHS, and 85,157 women ages 26 to 45 who were free of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer at baseline. After 22 years of follow-up, results suggested that higher olive oil intake is associated with modestly lower risk 
of type 2 diabetes in women, and that potentially substituting other types of fats and salad dressings with olive oil is inversely associated with type 2 diabetes. This study on PubMed showed there is a lower blood pressure effect, increase in the good cholesterol, HDL, and other amazing benefits in a randomized, single-blinded, placebo-controlled in 41 overweight or obese adults, 65 and older. The group provided olive oil to replace other oils, showed decreased in blood pressure, increased in good cholesterol, and overall cardiometabolic and immunological health benefits over the control group. This shows Olive's nutrition has the potential to treat obesity naturally. Now, how about cooking with olive oil? Let's discuss that. The smoke point matter. Well, I'm here to show you some research that smoke point doesn't give you the full picture. There was a study that came out in New Zealand looking at different oils and which is the best versus the worst to cook with. So they did two different trials and they looked at the most popular oils out there. So you see extra virgin olive oil, Virgin olive oil, olive oil, sunflower oil, peanut oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, grapeseed oil, rice bran oil, and canola oil. And they looked at the antioxidant quality, but they did two trials. So trial one, as you see here, was heating the oils gradually to 464 degrees Fahrenheit. Trial two was deep frying for six hours at 356 degrees Fahrenheit. And they looked at the antioxidant quality after heating and before. And you can see extra virgin olive oil had far more antioxidants than any other, followed by virgin olive oil, regular olive oil. So it's loaded with antioxidants. But also, instead of smoke point, which they also looked at, because olive oil, it's true, it doesn't have a high smoke point. But more important than smoke point is looking at these carcinogenic compounds that are produced after heating an oil called polar compounds. And the more polar compounds after oil after an oil is heated, the worse it is for you. Look what scored the best, meaning the least amount of these harmful compounds, extra virgin olive oil, followed by coconut oil, avocado oil, which we already made that suggestion. So I love real olive oil. Now that's the thing. It needs to be real extra virgin olive oil. Some of these olive oils out there are cut. So make sure you get a good one. The one that I use is from a company called the Fresh Press Olive Oil Club, which I'll share with you in a second. The recommended intake that I suggest is two tablespoons of olive oil per day. Use it for cooking, salad dressings, and dips. And if you're going to eat the actual olives, one to two cups per day, which is about six to 12 grams of carbohydrates. My favorite olive oil that I use is from the Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club. They're clean, they're organic, they support a small regenerative farmers, and you could get a 39 bottle, $39 bottle for a buck by going to ketocampoliveoil.com. We'll drop a link for that down below as well. The next one is lemons and limes. Lemons and limes support the liver to produce healthy bile. This is important for breaking down fat because when you eat dietary fat, you gotta break it down, and the liver produces bile to break that down. The gallbladder is the storehouse. The liver is what produces the bile. So if, number one reason I see why people struggle on keto and they have digestive issues, they got thick sluggish bile. So the solution would be bitters, including these right here, lemons and limes. Research shows it's great for heart health, fights against cancer, enhances weight loss, boosts immunity, aids in kidney stone prevention and reversal, increases iron absorption, these studies showed that heart disease is a major problem around the world. We know that. As the leading cause of death, it was responsible for an estimated 31%, 31.5% of all deaths worldwide in 2013. And by the way, that got worse. Studies show that eating lime fruit could reduce several heart disease risk factors and may help give your heart health a boost. One animal study in Iran, for example, showed that treating rabbits with lime juice and lime peels helped slow the progression of atherosclerosis, the buildup of plaque in the arterial walls. This study showed limes are an excellent source of vitamin C. In fact, just one lime can knock out nearly one third of your vitamin C need for the entire day. Getting enough vitamin C in your diet is very important for many aspects of health, but it's especially crucial when it comes to immunity. Limes also contain plenty of antioxidants. These beneficial compounds promote immunity by neutralizing harmful free radicals, which protect your immune cells and ward off infection. So the recommended intake for lemons and limes would be one lime or one lemon per day. Squeeze them over your proteins or vegetables, put it in water. It is fantastic. That is about 
5.4 grams of carbohydrates. Next, we have watermelon. Watermelon is actually my favorite tasting fruit, and it can help support immunity, improve heart health, helps with kidney stones, aids in hydration, digestion, detoxification, may help with weight loss, and even help with acid reflux. This study, well, several studies are showing really cool things about watermelon. A review published in the Journal of Advances in Nutrition showed that eating plenty of potassium-rich foods can positively impact blood pressure levels, which may be useful in reducing the risk of conditions like a stroke or a heart attack. And watermelon is loaded with potassium. Lycopene also benefits heart health by reducing inflammation, fighting oxidative stress, and potentially improving blood lipid levels. And watermelon is loaded with lycopene. New research, including results from a 2019 study, suggests that drinking 100% watermelon juice is a palatable, effective means of increasing serum lycopene in older adult women, a group at risk for low carotenoid intake. Studies also have shown that watermelon benefits may include helping relieve arterial stiffness, balance cholesterol, and improve systolic blood pressure in adults with hypertension. So the recommended intake is to eat the fruit over juicing it one cup of watermelon per day, which is about 7.4 grams of carbohydrates. So you're not kicked out of ketosis. Hey, I have a lot more to share with you before I get to my final tips here. We are doing a seven day keto challenge where we're going to dive deep into keto coming up in just a few days, January 9th. And if you want to join for free, go to ketocampchallenge.com. I will be leading it for seven days. We have Dr. Daniel Pampa as a guest speaker, Dr. Boz, Dr. Mindy Pels, and Megan Ramos. I'll drop the link for that down below. The next one is going to be cherries. Mm -mm -mm. Promote weight loss, boost heart health, loaded with antioxidants, helps treat inflammation, great for gout, and also helps promote quality sleep. So let's talk about gout real quick, which is a big concern for many of you watching this, I'm sure. A study published in Arthritis and Rheumatism evaluated 633 individuals with gout who were treated with cherry extract for over a two-day period. This cherry treatment, hard to say that, cherry treatment, was associated with 35% lower risk of gout attacks. It also helps with sleep. Sleep is foundational, especially with keto. Tart cherry juice contains high levels of phytochemicals, including melatonin, but not just the juice, the actual cherries too, by the way. This is a molecule. Melatonin is critical for the sleep-wake cycle and one of the most powerful antioxidants for your mitochondria, by the way. In a study published in the European Journal of Nutrition, 20 volunteers consumed either a placebo of tart cherry juice concentrate for seven days. As a result of the treatment, total melatonin content was significantly elevated in the cherry juice group. Recommended intake to stay in ketosis is half a cup of raw cherries, which is about 12.3 grams of carbs or two ounces of tart cherry juice, which is 8.6 grams of carbs. I put at the bottom there, having it as a dessert could be a great thing for you to do. It really gets you your, your uh, sugar fix, but also could help support sleep. So it's a great dessert after your last meal. I have my final fruit coming up and then I have a bonus tip. So let's get right into that. Last one is going to be cranberries. Cranberries have been proven to prevent and treat urinary tract infections, help decrease inflammation, helps with certain cancers, also improves immune function, benefits the digestive tract, and also reduces risk of heart disease. Let's talk about UTIs. Urinary tract infections are very common and one of the most well-known benefits is cranberry as its ability to be used as a home remedy for UTIs. UTIs are significantly more common in women than men due to the location of the urethra. They can affect any part of the urinary tract, but occur mostly in the bladder. Each year, it's estimated that urinary tract infections account for about 7 million office visits in the United States alone. The infection produces symptoms of frequent, urgent, or painful urination, which is sometimes accompanied by abdominal pain or blood in the urine. Most UTIs are caused by a harmful bacteria called E. coli. Cranberry juice is thought to contain a specific compound that prevents bacteria from attacking the inner surface of the urinary tract or bladder. It also improves immune health. According to some studies, cranberry extract can improve multiple aspects of immune functions and may even lower the frequency of cold and flu symptoms. 
It contains high levels of this antioxidant that are found in cranberries to help the immune system function. One of the biggest benefits of cranberry juice is its ability to ward off harmful bacteria and keep it from accumulating and growing in the gut lining. Cranberries are also loaded with vitamin C, supplying about 24% of the daily recommended value in a single cup serving. We know all about the benefits of vitamin C as it relates to cold and flu, and also pneumonia, malaria, and diarrhea. So what's the recommended intake? One cup of whole cranberries, which is about 12 grams of carbs, or four to six ounces of cranberry juice with no sugar added, which is about nine to 12 grams of carbs. I've got a bonus tip for you. Before I do, let me ask you this question. Out of the nine fruits I mentioned so far, which is your favorite? My favorite is watermelon, but type down below, comment below your favorite, and be sure to like and comment and also subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Here's the bonus tip. This is going to help you have more flexibility to have more fruit and prevent this big glucose spike because when glucose goes up, ketones drop, and we don't want that. So what can you do? This is some cool research. In a 2021 review of 51 studies published in sports medicine, researchers found that doing a single bout of at least 30 minutes of exercise, continuous cardio, within six hours of eating, decreased glucose and insulin levels in the six hours after a meal. This is called the postprandial period compared to being at rest. The paper is novel in it that it examined the glucose and insulin responses of only people without a diagnosed metabolic disorder. But also in 2016, a review examined 39 papers, which encompassed a collective 615 participants with various metabolic conditions such as diabetes, prediabetes, and obesity, and people without any diagnosed conditions. And the study authors concluded that exercising 30 to 45 minutes after eating is the ideal time to curb glucose levels. That exercise could be going for a walk, by the way. Low to moderate intensity activity, like a brisk walk, appears best for keeping the glucose levels in check after eating. One reason for this is that walking depends on aerobic metabolism, which draws upon glucose in combination with fatty acids and protein in the body. When you take a walk after eating, you burn through glucose at a moderate rate to help curb a spike without prompting the production of additional glucose. If you feel like you want to have more fruit than the recommended intake that I gave you, go for a walk after eating or do some exercise at least six hours before you have the fruit. This covers the fruit. What about vegetables? In the video you see on the screen here, we are going to cover our favorite keto veggies you can eat all the time, stay in ketosis, and feel good. Click or tap the screen right now to watch that video, and I'll see you in that next video.